know me. I see quite a few of my friends and people who have been in my meetings before. Uh, I've been in ministry almost 30 years, and I know I only look 25. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, and my husband works overseas. It was interesting that Anne said that. He's not in the oil business. He actually works for the uh, Department of Defense or the State Department and works in very uh, exotic, interesting places. Uh, he was in Antarctica a year ago at this time, and right now he is in Afghanistan. He can get into these places because he has security clearance, and he preaches the gospel. Yeah. He's an undercover agent. <laughs> but anyway, so he does Bible studies, and he has friends all over the world. And he's uh, just kind of very interesting. When he comes home, it's so much fun just hearing all of his adventures. Um, but to get back a little more to me, I um, had started out with ladies' ministry and children's ministry. I was raised Baptist, and I had this call of God in my life to go platform ministry, and that is not, um, at least at that time, was not really accepted in the Baptist church. Of course, then I was baptized with the Holy Ghost, and I was just too wild to be around those circles. Um, Involved. I uh, went to Word of Faith School. I went to uh, Purdue University and uh, got a degree from the School of Engineering Technology, which is very similar to A&M up north here. And uh, then I went to Bible School after that, I think after my children were even <coughs> trying to run away from the call, so to speak, and kept getting put in places. And every time I'd go and try to hide, I was given a microphone or a platform or some place to teach. Um, so let's see, a couple years ago, it's been about four years ago now, I started on television, um, on cable television, and did uh, some shows on someone else's show, and then I had my own show for about two years, uh, and now I need to, all of you pray with me, I need to get back in the studio, they are running reruns after reruns on the cable network here in Houston. So, and my husband are, and I are also really believing for that to maybe expand, perhaps into some uh, different venues, so. Just hang in there and pray with me. I teach now locally at, guess what, a Baptist church. <laughs> and uh, it's a large Baptist church, and I'm uh, just teaching a life group there, which is just, I look, it's kind of unbelievable that the Lord would do that. But you know what, like when God makes a way, you step into that. You step into that position. And you know what, it's just been a, an interesting experience what the Lord has taken me on in the last couple of years. So I'm very honored to be here. Um, and anything? Did I leave anything out? Well, no, I think I see she cupped it. So I'm waiting for turn it over to you. Oh. You got it. <laughs> and I got What I thought I would do, you know, uh, Susan had asked me to introduce all the ministers. And everyone here is so anointed that she's asked. Any, anybody here could have had the entire meeting to themselves. So what I'd like to do is very conc very concisely um, just bring some scriptures and some things the Lord had placed on my heart. Most of you know uh, my teaching ministry, and when I teach, we are in the Word, and we are pulling out scriptures from everywhere. Tonight, the Lord had put it on my heart that this would be a time of ministering to you, ministering to your hearts, and in a different way than some of you have uh Set up to my ministry before. And I was praying about what to share, and I was so excited. I had like three different directions I was going and thinking they were all from here. Well, it wound up to be none of them was working for here. And as I just prayed in the Spirit and got in His presence, He wanted me to share with you about the faithfulness of His love. And it was so interesting that as Anne was speaking, we saw such a beautiful demonstration of God's love. Even to people who were, uh, hadn't totally embraced him as their savior, he loved them. The, the 23rd Psalm, so appropriate. The, the notes I had in here to teach tonight, I brought out the 23rd Psalm. Because that is a, that is a love, he, he, he uh, satisfies us with good things. He, he leads us beside the still waters. That's love. It is a love letter. Every scripture is a love letter to you. And we're going to start with the scripture. I'm, like I said, I am not going to teach tonight, folks. Those are you that have your notepads and pencils that have been in my meetings before. I wanted to bring out uh, Romans 8.28. 
Every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Now I want you to let that sink down into your spirit, man. Every detail of your lives of love is worked into something good. So does that mean that irritating co-worker, as someone was talking about, I think it was Anne, it was talking about someone that just irritates you or upsets you, as you walk in the love of God that is shed abroad in your hearts by His Spirit, you are changing that person's life, whether you realize it or not. We are all called to the ministry of reconciliation. We are all called to restore people to the, the family. To, the Lord likes a big family, a big old family. And that's what we're all called to in that place, to step into to our position of that ministry of reconciliation. So every detail in your life of love for God is worked into something good. There's a benefit on the other end of that, and that is a Romans 8, 28 out of the Message Bible. Psalms 23, 5, run, we run over with blessings. With the Psalms... The, so the Psalms 23 talks about a cup that runs over. And most of us have heard and perhaps taught ourselves, sometimes that's a financial running over. The blessing on our life is so good, it's just running over. We have things to give. We have money to give. We have joy to give. We have all these things to give. How about that be? You have so much love, it's running over. And I think of a, a message I taught probably, I don't know, five years ago, about the two beams. And some, some of you have been in my meetings where I've talked about this before. If you have two structures, two beams, and they look identical, and they're painted the same, maybe they're painted a lovely blue color, and they're supporting beam for a structure, but inside those beams, one is made of steel, which is a little pliable, the other's made of titanium. When a big wind comes, Big wind comes. Both the beams look the same. Which beam is going to stand? Now I want you inside yourself to ask yourself, are you titanium? Guess what the strongest force in the universe is? Love. God is love. Are you made of love? Are you made of fear? Are you made of, heaven forbid, hate? Jealousy, pride. Are you made of that love of God that's been shed abroad in your heart by His Spirit if you've made Jesus Lord of, your, Lord of your life? So when the storms of life come and the irritating person comes and the relationship problem comes your way, you lose a job, something devastating, you lose a, a, a close family member, what are you made of? By faith you stand, and by fear you're going to fall. So I wanted to just really encourage you this evening. Be titanium. Be titanium in the spirit. The strongest force in the universe is what? Love. It's love. Guess who's love? Our daddy. God is love. Now... It seems very simple, and most of us have heard that scripture several times. If God is love, then we can be love. Our faith works by love. Do you need healing? Check your love gauge. Do you need a better job? Check your love gauge. There is an anointing for the spirit of love on these meetings. And I saw it weaved through as each person has done their part, all the way from Susan tapping into a vision the Lord gave her. Please don't raise your hand on this, but how many here have had visions and things, witty inventions, and done nothing with them? The bravery and the courage alone to step out as she did for these meetings has increased the anointing on her life. There will be doors that are going to open for her that wouldn't have opened before. Why did she do this meeting? Because she wanted to get up here and sing. She could have went anywhere and sang. She could be singing in nightclubs. She could sing anywhere she wanted to. Love. 
She's a titanium-filled woman, full of God's love, and could have probably speak anywhere in the world. Why did she take the time to come and speak to the, what, what is 50, 60 people here tonight? However many people are here. Why did she come? Love. Love them to me. God's love has positioned you here tonight for you to open up your spirit man and allow the love of God to be poured in in a greater measure than you've had before. But it's up to you. Another thing as I was praying for the meeting and seeking the Lord and just what my part was, I didn't really know. I just know as soon as she mentioned it, it's like, oh, help, what do you want? You want me to pray? What do you want? The Lord had put it in my heart that this meeting tonight, there were spiritual things unlocked this evening. There were spiritual things unlocked. There were opportunities of a lifetime here tonight. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, meet somebody, and you may. You may meet your future spouse or somebody that's going to give you a job. I don't know. That's not up to me. But what I got in my spirit, opportunity of a lifetime in the spirit realm. We are not fleshly beings. This is this is nothing. It has nothing to do with what somebody looks like, how they dress. That's not what this is about. I'm talking about tapping into the spirit realm and receiving your opportunity of a lifetime to receive the love of God and be healed of brokenheartedness, to be healed of divorce, to be healed of rejection, and to be re re healed of Fear. Fear literally blocks God's voice. So as you sit here and look at me tonight, and I don't care if you're CEO of some big organization, or you're head of a huge ministry, or you're a, a wife that's abused, or you're the husband that abuses your wife, I don't care where you are, Jesus loves you. And he sent this woman from the other side of town to tell you Jesus loves you and you have an opportunity of a lifetime tonight to embrace that love in a way that you never have before. And as you do, you will have that boldness and you will have the details that you need to step into that vision. Whether it's to own your first home, Pay off your car. Or to do something that God has put in you for the kingdom. Now, we, we came here tonight, most of us, not really knowing quite what to expect. But we expected God to show up. Amen. Some of you came here tonight thinking things were going to be a certain way or what's going to happen. For whatever reasons that you came out, the Lord knew what he wanted to do. Amen. He knew who was going to be here Amen. and who wasn't going to be here. He knew whose heart he was going to put it on the go and they weren't going to come. This is Friday night. We live in one of the biggest cities in the world. We could be anywhere we wanted to tonight. Amen. And we decided to come here, to come in this gymnasium and sit on these seats and see what God was going to do. The Lord is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So, God is love. He's in your heart. He's poured out a greater level of love to you tonight. You have a responsibility to this. There are broken hearted people in here tonight that we would look at and never know in the natural. You've been disappointed. Things haven't worked out in your ministry, your relationships, your jobs. <laughs> Daddy wants to heal that. Jehovah Rapha, the great healer, wants to heal what needs to be healed. He wants to align what needs to be aligned. And that, that works one way, by love. Your faith for your deliverance and your healing and your promotion is in knowing that He loves you and receiving His love. 
Susan had asked me to do an altar call tonight. And I was thinking, how was I going to work this in? Because we've got some ministers that have got great things to say, and everybody's got their own testimony. So I, I think how we'll do this is, I would like to call up the men and women of God that she's asked me to call up tonight. And as they give their testimony, I don't want you to let go of this, this love anointing. There is a, there is a opening in the spirit realm for you to tap into that. Before we do that, right now, there are some healings that need to take place right in here. There are some ministries that are blocked. There are some people that feel blocked. And I want you to come forward. I want you to just be bold, be strong, come up here and make a line. This is not what I plan to do, but I'd like you to come forward. Go ahead. I see we are. I already know anyway. Holy Ghost knows. They need healed. Their ministries need healed. Their lives need healed. Their love walk needs healed. I am asking you, under this anointing, to drop your love down like they've never known before. Bring to the forefront what needs to give, be gone. To just kick it out and get it out. And as I touch them, Father, I expect your truth to come forth. Father, we thank you for your sweet spirit. I thank you for your sweet spirit. I thank you for your sweet spirit. Derek? I want to introduce uh, Pastor and Minister Derek to you and he and his wife, Kay, who is she didn't want to come up here, but you're welcome. <laughs> if you are in ministry, or if your spouse is in ministry, guess what? You're in ministry. <laughs> so I'm going to give him the mic here. Or, or do any of these other mics? What mic is hot, guys? Whichever one you want. 